Okay, welcome back. This time we're going to have a look at run plays in standard EFHL rules. And regardless of whether this is going to be a handoff or a pitch out or a lateral or a quarterback scramble, uh, these all work the same way in our rule system. Now, in classic out-of-the-box electric football, a run play is basically before the play begins, you identify the running back ball carrier and you buzz the board and resolve the play. There's no, there's no stoppage whatsoever. We're, that's not how we're going to do this in, in standard EFHL rules. Um, we begin every play with the understanding that the quarterback is the ball carrier, which is true for uh, standard pass plays, but we're applying that to run plays as well. And uh, this procedure is the same regardless of whether uh, you're going to do a simple handoff to a running back or uh, a longer uh, pitch out or lateral pass, or you're, the quarterback is indeed going to keep the ball for himself. Um, and that's really going to be determined by how long you buzz the board, uh, the situation, the development of the play, and so on and so forth. Now, in advanced EFHL rules, there are several stoppages that allow you to set up uh, your play. Uh, not so. There's, uh, there's literally one stoppage in standard EFHL gameplay, and uh, this happens after the center snaps the ball to the quarterback. Now, if the quarterback is under center, uh, it's an automatic handoff or transfer of the ball from the center to the quarterback. If the quarterback has dropped back in shotgun, uh, then there is a snap check, and it's simply a, a roll of two six-sided dice. If the roll is three through 12, uh, the quarterback has caught the ball and the play will resume. If the roll is snake eyes, double ones, it's a bad snap, or the quarterback has mishandled the ball, and it results in a fumble before the play even starts. Drop the ball, all unblocked players pivot, the play is completely off the rails at that point. If the offense recovers, it's dead at the spot. If the defense recovers, they can attempt to run it back toward their end zone. Okay? So, uh, for this particular circumstance, we'll assume that the quarterback is under center. And you can put him backwards on the base if you want to so he can roll out or, or, or fade back. I just turn him around here since I'm playing solitaire. You might also notice I've got... The quarterback's facing backfield as well. You cannot block the wide receivers or the slot receivers at the line of scrimmage. That's a penalty if you do that. So we've gone ahead and padded in. Since uh, we don't know whether it's going to be a pass or a run play, this is what we're doing. The quarterbacks just happen to be in, in man coverage, or the cornerbacks happen to be in man coverage at this time. We'll do something else here in just a few minutes. Now, the audibles have already happened if you're playing head-to-head -head against someone else. And again, the audibles work exactly the same way as they do in classic electric football. And so before we run and demo a play here, we will talk about uh, stationary pace, uh, bases in scrimmage plays, uh, or at least tipping players over. Uh, your safeties, oft times your cornerbacks, and sometimes even your middle linebackers uh, would want to, if you don't have dialed bases that allow them to spin into circles, uh, the, the only way to uh, simulate zone coverage would be to put them on a stationary base, or for our purposes, just tip them over, anyone that's going to stay in zone coverage until they determine what sort of play is developing here. This could be a pass play. They don't know. Uh, but the uh, cornerbacks are going to continue downfield with their assigned uh, receivers. And that includes this uh, defensive back right here. The strong safety is, is is keeping an eye on this slot receiver, man coverage with him as well. Uh, and you can also allow the quarterback in shotgun to go stationary when you buzz the board. That's a dangerous thing to do because if he remains stationary, uh, linebackers and linemen could bust through and sack him uh, for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. You know, tackling the ball carriers, front of base tackling the ball carrier, regardless of whether it's a, a, a runner or the quarterback is a tackle, okay? Uh, so that's one thing you could do. I, th that's not what we're going to do in this circumstance. Uh, there are th Once we... Uh, Buzz the board, and let's just go ahead and do that. I'll make Henry back here stationary, and we'll just buzz the board. And I think, uh, for our purposes, we'll make it a very, very quick buzz. So, this is the snap, and at this point, we don't know if it's going to be a run play. We don't know if it's going to be a pass play, but here we go. All right, that's the uh, first buzz there. And at this point, uh, now the uh, offensive coach has to say whether he's going to execute a pass play or a run play. If it's a run play, he has to transfer the ball to a running back. Now, you can have up to three running backs 
in the backfield. Uh, but in this case, we should, it, it, normally in modern football, there's typically only one. The fullback is you don't see those very much anymore. But at this point, uh, we will uh, stand Henry up here. And so now it's going to be a, one of three things is going to happen. The quarterback is either going to keep it for himself and scramble, at which point he would pivot and head toward the line of scrimmage and try to bust through and make a play out of it. Uh, you typically do that if there is no uh, open receiver and if you don't have a running back behind you to, to do anything with. Otherwise, you're either going to pitch out or lateral or handoff. They're technically all three the same thing, and the difference is only determined by the amount of distance between the passer or the ball carrier, the quarterback, and the receiver, in this case, uh, the running back. Um, if a running back or an eligible receiver is within 10 yards of the quarterback behind him or lateral to him, he can pitch out or lateral to that. 10 yards, if we have that marked here on uh, this little card that we'll be using more for the passing and kicking game. But uh, that's quite a lot of distance. Uh, but that's, uh, that's how they do it in classic electric football. So we do the same thing. So, I mean, that's a huge range that the quarterback could actually pitch out or lateral uh, the ball uh, behind the line of scrimmage like so, okay? That's quite a bit of distance there. Uh, Henry is well within range. In fact, he's about, oh, yeah, he is, well, from the front of the quarterback's base, he's almost within five yards. So I would actually probably rule this a handoff. Now, regardless of whether it's a pitch out, a lateral, or a handoff, there is a check to see whether the ball is, is, is transferred cleanly. This is the same as advanced EFHO rules. We roll two six-sided dice. If the roll is three through 12, it is clean. There's no problem. If the roll is snake eyes, there's a problem. Okay, I rolled a five, it would be clean. But if it were snake eyes, just the same as with that quarterback shotgun snap check, uh, we would uh, drop the ball. <laughs> oh, there's a Tennessee bounce if I've ever seen one. And all unblocked players would pivot, and we would try to recover the ball and make a play out of it if possible. Actually, if, if the offense recovers the fumble, it's dead at the spot. If the defense recovers, all unblocked players pivot. They can attempt to, to run the ball at that point. All right. But at this point, in this instance, the handoff is clean. And that may not look like a realistic distance for a handoff to you. If you want to rule that as a pitch out, you go right ahead. That's fine with me. But now... Uh, all unblocked players pivot because we know it's going because we called a, 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 a we called a pitch out. Uh, at this point, all our zone defense players down here would be picked back up, and uh, the uh, middle linebackers are, are are not happy about this because they're they're worried that Henry's going to try to punch through the uh, line of scrimmage here, and they might he might I don't know, but uh, the strong safety is also going to. He has to make a choice. Is he going to try to shoot the gap here, or is he going to try to shoot the gap here? He'll say here, and he'll shoot this one. And at this point, uh, because it is uh, a run play now, uh, we can do some blocking here. And, well, there's not much blocking to be had here, is there? Uh, but the strong safety is still free to plug up the hole there. Actually, he'll probably do something like that and like that. The quarterback is just going to get out of the way one way or the other. And since they're shooting for this gap, I'm going to send Henry this way. I have no confidence this is going to be a uh, successful run play. Uh, ideally, you want to, uh, for any run play, you want to do a toss sweep and send your ball carrier out to the flat and around on a base with a dial and, and pick up. That works quite well. In this instance, can anyone else pivot? Not really. The entire line of scrimmage is tied up. So, And typically the quarterback is not going to block. He's, he's facing backfield anyway. He's just going to get out of the way and allow uh, Henry to try his very best to punch through the line of scrimmage and gain positive yardage on this. Okay? So here is uh, all unblocked players have pivoted, and here is the play. Remember, if he... If his forward progress is impeded for more than one second, the play is over, okay? And if he's tackled by the front of an opponent's base, he's if he's touched by the front of an opponent's base, he is tackled. So here we go. There's the ball carrier, 27. Uh, we're going to call him down about right there because I'm pretty sure number 57, even though he was down, he caught him with the front of his base at one point. That's 
what I saw. And if I wanted to dispute that, um, we could do an instant replay check with one six-sided dice. If the result is odd, it's in favor of the defense. If the result is even, it's in favor of the offense. Uh, but at this point, I mean, uh, the play is, is is over. But it is a five. So yeah, he was. We're gonna say he was down right here at about. Ah, he got a first down. How about that? Of course he did. It's, it's, it's Derrick Henry. But uh, that's. And you may have said, well, that might have been more than one second for forward progress. He was moving throughout all that. He was impeded certainly, but he was inching forward and then broke through. So I would give him that. I didn't see any other front of base tackles up until we got to this. And he that might not have been a front of base tackle, but but that's what the uh, that's what the fail safe is for. Uh, to if, when I can't tell for certain, that's what the dice roll is going to be for. Fine example of a run play. Again, the toss sweep out to the flat around is typically far more successful in electric football than just trying to run it up the middle like I just did. This time it paid off. Again, uh, we're doing good here with good examples of these plays. Um, so what else can we tell you? Uh, we This would apply for a pitch out, a lateral, or a quarterback keeper. Uh, that's, uh, you know, in conventional electric football rules, a quarterback keeper is technically starts as a pass play, but if there's no eligible receiver open, you can opt to scramble and try to make a play out of it, but it's still a run play. And you can also do a quarterback keeper design play, go back and shotgun, uh, say the quarterback is the receiver. Obviously that's true for any play. And then, uh, buzz the board for a moment. You can even keep them stationary for a moment, a split second, a microsecond, and then say scramble and just run towards the line of scrimmage and try to execute a run play or try a toss sweep with a dial base, whatever you want to do. That's essentially how run plays work in the standard EFHL rules. Now, a couple things to watch out for. If the quarterback drops back more than 20 yards, that's a covered sack. That's exactly the same as a standard classic EFH or classic electric football rules. And again, conversely, you can tip the quarterback over and he can remain stationary in the pocket. Uh, but that runs the risk of being uh, sacked behind the line as well. Um, at any rate, to recap the procedure for run plays, uh, you snap the ball, you buzz the board for uh, up to one second. Uh, you're probably not that long for a run play because uh, you, you'll, you'll either overshoot your receivers, at which point it becomes a shovel pass rather than a, a pitch out or a handoff or a lateral identify the ball, the new ball carrier, your, your running back or your fullback. Um, uh, roll two six-sided dice to determine if the handoff is, or the pitch out of the lateral is clean. And if it's snake eyes, it's a fumble. Resolve that as described earlier. Otherwise, uh, all unblocked players pivot, buzz the board until the play resolves. Okay? There are no additional stoppages in standard EFHO rules unless... There's a, a back of base tackle, which results in a fumble, or the ball carrier gets knocked over by a defender, which would result in a fumble, in which case uh, we'd resolve that as described in the, uh, in the, in the chapter on uh, definitions or redefinitions. You know, all unblocked players pivot, whoever touches the ball first gains possession, or roll dice as described in definitions the same way to determine uh, who has regained possession. If the offense regains possession, it's down at the spot. If the defense regains possession, uh, they can uh, all unblocked players pivot and they can attempt to, uh, to run with it. That's just a simplified method, uh, a simplified way of doing it. I think that's exactly how classic electric football rules handles it as well. But the main difference here is that we've applied the concept of uh, the pitch out and lateral uh, to also include a handoff, simply de determined by the amount of distance between the quarterback and the running back. OK, that's the only difference. Uh, that's contrary to electric football, uh, classic electric football, where a handoff is essentially uh, point at a running back prior to the play and then just buzz the board until it's resolved. That's the only real difference. Um, this method is more realistic and it gives the defense an opportunity to respond. They, again, they don't know whether this is going to be a pass play or a run play until uh, the new ball carrier is identified, either for run plays as the running back or fullback uh, or for pass plays as one of the intended receivers downfield. Okay, so that's run play, pals, and I think we did a good job uh, demonstrating that. It was a great run for a dive play up the middle. <laughs> you got a first down out of it. Uh, that's, that's pretty remarkable. 
And I've talked about this before. The reason it's so hard to do an executed run play, even with these standard EFHL rules in electric football, is because of the giant square box beneath or rectangle beneath every player's feet. Just gets in the way. But as you can see, when the uh, had the uh, had the two middle linebackers shot the gaps immediately, that wouldn't have happened. But uh, in, in this particular case, that's exactly what happened. And for a, a first down at around, I would say the forty-two yard line. Okay. And again, if you ever get in a situation where you, you're not sure there was a tackle or whether someone went out of bounds or whether uh, the ball crossed the plane of the uh, the line to gain or the end zone or something like that, roll a dice. You have a 50-50 chance of it succeeding that way. And also a 50-50 chance of it not succeeding. Can't get more fair than that. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Next time we'll have a look at, we'll begin to have a look at pass plays. We may have to split this up in multiple installments because pass plays is far more involved than run plays. Okay, see you then. Take care.